whether, whether they are interested in religion or not, but the text is not threatening. You know, you okay, can just this, and it's not, it doesn't compel you to for anything. It could give you interesting insights. Yeah, just so, a second. I just go and catch my Bible. No, it's we. Uh, Udi will have it on the screen. Ah, okay. The Zoom, Great. the Zoom platform is wonderful for lazy people. <laughs> <laughs> Marvelous. Everything on the screen. Udi prepared the beautiful screen with wow. Hebrew, English, and German. And, and Martin Luther's translation from 1912. It's not me, but <laughs> And I discovered a wonderful... Actually, before we start, your German and English are excellent. How would you translate the German word beschert? Beschert. Beschert. Um, um, I think I would translate it like you are gifted or something is donated to you um, it's not not that easy um hmm. if something is beshared to you or for you what does it mean it means that um something is uh happening to me um uh, usually something good is happening to me it, it's like a gift or like a because in the Jewish word, use of this, in the Yiddish world, it comes from German, yeah. it means like, like it was created for me. It, it means something much deeper. They use it only for yeah. a woman. They don't use it for anything else. It is the shirt for me, means she was meant to be my wife. Ah, okay. And, and this is the word that Martin Luther uses in the, in the, we'll see, we'll see the story of Rebecca and the, and the, the slave, and Abraham's slave. You remember the mm -hmm. stories? Yeah. So he, he uses the word of Beshert, and I was so impressed because the James version of the Bible says appointed. Uh huh. Yeah. And the, the Hebrew word is Ochachta, which is not very clear. Ochachta usually means proven. Mm -hmm. That uses the Beshert, and I liked it very much. But you say that now it means only given? Um. It, it, yes, I think so. I mean, it, it, it is made for you. That's also um, a possible meaning, but it's a wider, it's a wider uh, meaning in these days. Uh -huh. Inter very interesting. Yeah, I mean, in the 500 years since Luther's translation, something happened to the German too. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think that I think that the Jews maintained the older meaning of the German because yeah, yeah. the Yiddish branched off the German. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. So the idea is when Dagmar will come in, I'll explain it again, but I think the idea is we should do text together, discuss the text, yeah. and then we'll find the ways with Udi's help how to widen the discussion group the, the center will be text, because text is very good. We all know, all religious people, actually, Christianity and Judaism are religions of text. Yeah. So, so we have text, we have verses, we have chapters, we can navigate it. You can navigate very, you don't wander off. It is, it, it gives a focus to the discussion. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. I can. Okay, this is the topic of today. So yes, this is, okay, so you want to show them the, show the English. It is in English. No, we have the three, the three options. Yeah. This is the full. This is Hebrew. This is English, and this is German. Great. And when we go into it, we'll we'll take it a piece by piece, and I'll just show you. Okay, that first is the beginning the, of the story. Mm -hmm. I, I would get closer so you can read it. Okay, that is yeah. It's okay by you, Axel. It's it's beseder gamur. Okay. You can always, you know, move from whatever language you want. If you want me to stress a specific language, I will I will do that also. But here, uh, but but uh, Udi, you have the last passage also. Uh, it should be coming up in a minute. Okay. Okay. Now. 
uh, Axel, what is our mission? Our mission is, as we said, to make, the, I think we can specify it, make the Bible relevant to people. Before we make religion relevant to people, we have to make the Bible relevant to people, right? I think it's easy. I agree totally fully, yes. Yes, and, in, and Genesis is the easiest uh, book to make it relevant to people because I think everyone can find himself in yep. Genesis. Uh, yes. You can do it in Jeremiah, but Jeremiah is much more difficult and Jeremiah cries the whole time or punishes you the whole time. And Genesis is, is more, you know, it's, uh, it's good for everyone. Mm-hmm. And I think, and so our idea is, and our mission is, I think, to try to widen it, wind the circle, widen the circle of people that join in this mm-hmm. discussion, to make people aware of that. So actually we have three avenues. To begin with, I, I am, one day I'll take Alexander Degg by the ears and force him to join us. And <laughs> Tell him that if he doesn't join us, I'm not going to talk. Or maybe when he'll be in Israel, I'll take years, put him in front of the computer and, and make him join us. <laughs> and I don't need Alexander so much. I want him to understand what we are doing and have his students join us. By the and, way, if you, if you want technologically, I can invade his phone. And control. You can invade his phone. Okay. And, and uh, so they are the students that Alexander has, but they are... They are, you know, they are already committed. They are, they are going to be pre- They are going to be pastors, and maybe people, youth that you have connection with, and people that Dagmar has connection with. These are three circles that you can begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if we take that, then the, it, we have an explosion. Then you know, friends are friends. If we are successful, it could be a wonderful thing. Yeah. However, we cannot have the Zoom meeting with 50 people. I, my daughter does it, but she does it with young kids and she silences them. Hi, Dagmar. Hi. 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 Oh, oh hi. <laughs> this is you crazy. Are yeah, I'm sorry and very wet. Look at my face because I was really riding my bike like crazy, but. Somebody broke leg this morning in daycare, so it was totally mess, and that's why I'm late. I'm very sorry. Hi, Axel. Oh, hi, Christy. <laughs> das ist ja witzig. I've never been in such a conference time. Okay, okay, now I'm stopped being so excited. Sorry. <laughs> hey, good morning. Wonderful. So good to see you, and so good to, to hear that you're well enough to ride your bicycle. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, we had really, this well, all the family has had this infection, but now everybody is fine. So, um, but it was a little bit strange. It was a tough ride. It was not a virus, but it was tough, yeah. No, no, it's fine. And I'm riding very fast, as you can see from my face. Yes. So I <laughs> Good. I really envy you. I don't know. I work. Axel was in vacation. You were sick. You were sick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And we have to keep work. We poor people have to keep work. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll put you right. It, it, it's really wonderful to see you here. And you see it's easy. It's pretty much painless, right? Yeah, it is. It is. I can see. <laughs> now, we, we decided that we are going to devote this. What? Can you introduce us? Ah, so you don't know. You know Axel. I know Axel. And but above, I don't the, the above that is me, and, yeah. and you, Hezi. Hezi on the top left. Right. He's yeah. uh, nice a member of our group. And Rolly, you know, you remember Rolly? With the I, hat? Yeah, of course, I do. And also with the hat. And right. next to you, with another hat, with, with an older hat, is, uh, is Udi. Udi. Udi is the, he's the brain behind the Sugia platform. Ah, okay. And he also... And also, he's the brain behind other ideas. I, I said occasionally he has good ideas. Okay. We, don't have to, we don't have to put our money on that, but he has some good ideas. And this is the platform that, that we'll see. Okay, okay. What, what's the idea? Man, everybody. Okay, you see this? Yeah, I see. He overtook now the, the Zoom. You can, op- you can take over the screens. So now, uh, Udi owns our screens. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will stop sharing only when we need, but I just wanted you to see the... Okay. okay. Now, Udi had a very good idea, 
that we that our discussions will go will be uh, around the text because text is 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 a structure and we yeah. Christians and Jews we are people of text yeah. we know text we have verses you know it's 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 we don't you do, the, the discussion will not just wander off to, to other dimensions and I think that our goal could be very simple to make the text relevant to people to young people of nowadays mm-hmm. so instead of saying we want to make religion relevant which is a, a difficult thing we'll make the text relevant to people mm-hmm. and especially the text of Genesis mm-hmm. which is simple is friendly is understandable and and it's very easy to make it relevant and it's real pity that more people I wonder that young people don't know Genesis by heart because it's really a wonderful wonderful book Mm-hmm. So, for people, you know, not, not, not even religious people. And uh, actually, G- Genesis is a book of life, people's mm-hmm. life, how, how people are. And we can, since we believe that the text is holy text, we can also try to go into the meaning of the text. People did it for many, many years. So we'll discuss family values and tradition. This will be our discussion. And we'll discuss... Two family, I mean, we'll discuss a family in Genesis. But also, I said the topic, so I gave you the topic. Ah, okay. So, so we, we have actually two stories. Uh, we, have, we have the story of, Lies, uh, of, this, of the servant, a Jewish tradition, it was Eliezer, but the servant that came to find wife for Isaac. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the second thing is, when God talks about Abraham, and he says, he says that Abraham was chosen because of his uh, generations to come. Mm-hmm. Because of, uh, you see, father and sons. It should be mm-hmm. father and sons. Yeah. And generations afterwards. So I think we should make a trial now mm-hmm. of uh, looking into the text. And I'll just, I'll just describe the, the points there and let you will let you uh, have your insight. And then once we do that, then in the Sugya platform, it could be redigested to make it uh, relevant for people to make them want to look into the text. Mm-hmm. We, we are already people that at least once saw the text. Every one of us saw the text at least once, many times. But we want to interest people that never saw it, they don't know what Genesis is. Mm-hmm. to look into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is, what is our audience? Who is our audience? I think that I told Axel we'll have to force uh, Alexander to attend us, to attend a meeting with us once because I, in his students. Not in him so much, but in his students. Mm-hmm. And the youth that Axel has contact with and the youth that you have contact with. Mm-hmm. This will be a start. And from then, if it's good, it'll explode. If it's bad, it'll close down. Okay, but, but we are doing, we are now the nucleus of the, of the project. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now let's see the story. I'll, I'll try to tell the story in, in short. Uh, Udi, give us the first part of the story, the question. Well, sorry, I gave you the answer. I always like answers before questions. <laughs> no, as far as you know that there is an answer, it's okay. Your okay. doll just larger. Okay, that's that's good. That's good. Can you see it, uh, Dagmar? Yeah. But uh, would like to see full screen? No, it's fine. I can see. Uh, yes, but can you make it full screen? So we'll see the whole. We'll see more. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now the the story was the story was that the servant decided to find the wife had to find the wife in Mesopotamia for Abraham that lived in uh, in Israel in Palestine and he had to cross the desert took ten camels and and brought with himself uh, all the goods of his master and uh, he went to the city of Nahor. And then he, has, he comes to the city of Nahor, to Mesopotamia, and he has to find the girl. I'm sure there are many girls there. Half of the population are women. And he has to find a particular girl that will 
be the bill, right? Okay, so he tells the Lord, he makes, he, he, he prays to the East, he asks the Lord for a good, he said, good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. What does he say? Look at verse 13. Behold, I stand here by the well of water. Go upwards. There. Don't move. And the daughters of the men of the city come to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, and I may drink, and she'll say she'll give the water to the camel. This should be, he prays that this should be the woman that was appointed for the servant Isaac. Look in the English, Axel. Where is Axel? Here? Here. Okay. Hi. Uh, can you put uh, Udi, the people on top? The people on top. <clears throat> Arrange it so the people will be on top. Right. Okay, I can do it. Is that okay? No, it's okay. Now, look, look in, in, in verse 14. Keep verse 14 in place. Don't move it. So you see the English is, uh, he prays that this will be the girl or the damsel that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. This is King James Version of the Bible, a little bit archaic. Now I told Axel before that if you see the Luther's translation, he says that this is the Damon Diner Isaac Beshert has. So I asked him what is the meaning of the word Beshert? What mm-hmm. session? Trying to show you it exactly. Can I tell you Okay. Here's the Beshert, no? You see it? I only I can see the the German and the English. I can't see the Hebrew because I see okay. your face. Uh, that's, I would. Is that okay? Is this better now? No, we don't see the Hebrew. No. No, no. Oh, no you can move. You can move the the videos of us speaking. Ah, oh, hi, Oli. Hi. <laughs> of us, yeah. I can move. Ah, wait. Okay, great. You can shift it to the bottom, and then it yeah. aligned itself to the bottom. Yeah, great. Right. You don't you don't lose control completely. Now you that's great, because I need the Hebrew. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you see the Hebrew now? Yeah, I have it. Thank you. Okay, so if you see the Hebrew, you know Hebrew. Of course you know Hebrew. Okay, so it says, it says, You see? Okay. Third yeah. line. So what is Ochachta? Ochachta usually means proved, but it has nothing to do here. It says, you proved her for your slave Isaac. It means nothing. So, so the Vulgata says something you... The appointed is a good is a good translation, meaning uh, you put her you you put her in place. But I wonder what is the beshert uh, here the the translation beshert has. Why do I say that? Because in Yiddish the Jews used beshert, meaning like it was created for you, and we use it only only in the context of wife and husband. You yeah. know, and they use it even now even the. Hebrew speaking uh, youth say, you know, this woman is my beshert woman. And they say it in Hebrew, who are Isha beshert sheli. But in Germany, in German, it's beshert or bescherung, it's often kmo, it's kmo matana. Aber, yes. Again, matana, aber, um, but um, it can also, you could also say, um, was für eine bescherung, and that would mean, um, what a what a mess! Such a balagan. So that also could be bescherung. So our if we hear beshert, we have a totally different work frame around us. If we hear it's that, very, it's very interesting. Yeah, but, but those two those two join together in in something that in English would sound like serendipity. It sound what? I didn't understand. In English, the, in English, you would say something like serendipity. I think yes. I'm not quite sure. In the sense I that you have you have the balagan of everyday life. The things yeah. come together and fall apart and aren't really uh, uh, set up. Yeah. On the other hand, there's there's a feeling that this is how it should have been. Yes uh, and no. It's also if you make a mess because a uh, vase with flowers is falling down, you could also right, so say, uh, be a bescherung like this. You know, I, I mean, can be can be in both direction, and. Yeah. 
And we whenever, did... whenever something bad happens to me in my life, whenever something bad happens to me in my life, my mother tells me it's okay, it's Bishirt. Yeah, and this is something you would never use it that way in, in German. Mm. Never. Or Axel, correct me. Yes. I mean, Bescherung can be Balagan and it can be a marvelous gift. Christmas evening. What we do Christmas evening, if we, gave, if we give the um, presents to the children, we call this Bescherung. Uh, any gift. Um, yes, any gift. Yes, any gift. Yeah. Uh, so it's very interesting whether in Luther's time it was the same. Could be. Then he simply translated the appointed. Appointed could be given. But, mm -hmm. but then it has nothing to do with the Hebrew, with hochachta. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. You see, ochachta, ochachta is not gave, but no yeah. way. No, yeah, yeah. No, no connection between the word ochachta to, the word, uh, to the word give. Okay. Okay. Uh, now let's see what, what so, so, okay, so the question is, oh, not a question, the thing is that the prayer is that uh, this, this woman that will say, uh, I'll give you to drink, she's the right woman. But, but if there are 50 girls that come out, how is he going to choose? How does he know whom to approach? Yes, he has to, he has to approach a certain girl and tell her, please let me drink. How will he decide whom to approach? He doesn't say. Hmm. Go on. The next the answer. <clears throat> okay. So now this is the this is not the the, the servants' words. This, this is the person who, this is the story. It doesn't, Terem Kila Ledaber, he's still talking. Vine Rivka Yutset. Udi, it's your turn to say it. We're going to read all the Okay. Vine Terem Kila Ledaber, Vine Rivka Yutset, Asher Yulda Lebetuel Ben Milka, Eshet Nachor Achi Avraham, Vekada Al Shikma. So she is the perfect woman, the, the good family, she belongs to the right family, everything is wonderful. But I'm sure she came among other girls. So how did he, why did he go to her? It was an inspiration? No, very interesting. You see. Maybe. Look maybe at the, I, what? I think that the words, who terem kila ledaber, Yes. Uh, they, they told us why you think that she uh, is the one. Is, but we'll uh, see. There is, there is, there no, is an it's the timing. It's the timing. The timing oh. is the issue. Okay, but let's go. Let's go. Could be. I, I, we'll, we'll talk about it in the, afterwards. Just let's see the story. She's beautiful. So could be that why did he approach her? Because she was beautiful. So, you know, there is the providence on one hand, the girl, the lady that God appointed for Isaac, and he assumes that at least even if the, in the world appointed, that there is a girl who is appointed, and, uh, but she's also beautiful. So he runs to her. Maybe he runs to her because she's beautiful. Okay, and then the story is that she fits the bill. She said what... what, what <laughs> She, she, she said the right words, the right password. Okay, next. Next, next, next. Okay, the next, next uh, thing. And he's waiting to see who she is. And she tells him who she is, and everything is wonderful. Now go to the next part. The next part, the next part. Resource, the good resources, the answer. Allah. The conclusion. You all know the story. So when the camels finished drinking, he decided to treat her as if she's already engaged to Isaac. He gives her presents. I am sure that in the modern world and not in the ancient world, an older slave with camels will not give jewelry to a girl. 
I mean, he will be killed if he gives jewelry to a girl unless it's an engagement. So he first gives her, the, he's so convinced that everything is printed and it's appointed, the shirt, so he gives her the, the, the nose ring and he gives her bracelets, heavy bracelets, uh, heavy golden bracelets. And he, then he asks her, tell me who she is. He's so confident that he doesn't have to ask. He's positive that she was the right woman, right? And she says, this is my uh, lineage. I, I, I'm, I'm a, her father is a cousin of Abraham. And uh, he told her, you can, you can come to our house. Hala, next. Can you, okay. And then he bows to Hashem and says, wonderful, I was successful. Okay, next. Next, next. Okay. Okay, now he has to uh, convince the family to give their daughter to this person from Palestine, from across the desert. So he tells them, listen, at first it's decided by God, it's appointed by God, it's assured by God. Second, is to be, be good people. So they tell him, it came from, from uh, God, so we cannot discover it from him that it comes from God, and that we cannot say anything. So it's all we believe in predestination, God's appointment. There is no, no question. Take it. We cannot, it's the say, we don't agree. We, he, he, he asked them to consent, so they said we cannot consent. Our opinion is irrelevant. We cannot speak to the bad or good. We, we don't say anything. It's, it's, it's a done, it's a done thing. <clears throat> so he takes Rebecca home, and next. And here is the most surprising, very surprising thing. The meeting. Good. Uh, okay, now how is the meeting? The meeting is the walk, the walk in the field, right? and, and, the, and Rivka views a person that walks in the field, and she asks the servant who he is, and he said, he is my master, he is your husband. She never saw him before. Okay, and then the servant tells it's Isaac all that he do, and he tells him, this is your appointed wife, this is your gift, it was created for you, you have to take her. Okay, then, so Isaac brings her, Ha'ohela Sara'imo. Now I think this is the most significant part of the story. He brings her to his mother's tent. I think everyone could write, you know, not even Freud could write about it, that he brings his wife to his mother's tent, and he takes... He takes, he takes Rivka and she becomes his wife. He loves her. So the, trans, the, no, the translation is good uh, that, uh, that he was comforted after his mother's death. She died and he was, he was not really comforted. comforted. Now she, she takes the place of his wife. Now there is an Aramaic translation. Agmar, did you or an accent? Did you hear of Konkin? The Aramaic translation of the of the Bible? Yes. Onkelos. So Onkelos writes that he saw that her deeds are as good as his mother's. Meaning that what did he look for? He looked for someone that will be like his mother. So we see three elements of, of uh, creating a family. She's beautiful. She's appointed. And what is the third part? Really, after being beautiful and after being appointed, there is one crucial matter. She has to be like your mother. <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. Now, now, next, uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll see something else that has to do also with family, not about a wife, but with family. Very famous verse. Uh, you have the next thing, uh, Udi? Sure. And this will, then I will close my mouth and listen to you. Father and sons of or intergenerational. Okay. You remember the story of Sodom, and God told after God promises Abraham that he'll have a child, then he tells him, I cannot hide from Abraham what I'm doing. Because Abraham will be a great and mighty nation. Let's go down. Now, the, now the, maybe the most famous verse in Genesis. So, people, I want to make a suggestion here. We spoke about family values. Now, what is family values? Here we are talking about family values, really. The values of the family. That the family is a family because the family has values. So what is Abraham's family? He will give his over his values to the children. So I think we see something very interesting about the family, that family is all about giving values to your children. And since Abraham's values are good values, that's why he chose him. So every person gives his value, values over to the children. But Abraham, when he gives his values, this will be the way of God. So we, we saw a fourth thing about the family. We said, appointed wife, beautiful wife, she's behaving like your mother, and she, she reminds you of your mother. And the fourth thing is that family is values. The, the essence of family is handing over values. So that's it. That's what I wanted to present. Now, I just made suggestions now. The, the I didn't get the last have. bit. You said the essence of the family after after her beauty and as the mother. You said the essence of family is what? To give over va- your values. The values. Your, okay, okay. The values. So Abraham's values is the way of God, but you you give down the values. Now Daniel just popped in. We used to speak about values. This was his duty to to speak about values. He so, was before, but we didn't see him because of the speech. Ah, he was behind the text. Yeah, yeah. That is the right, the he, real place he, he, for he Daniel, Daniel to hide behind the text. That's where he belongs. No, he was the voice. He, he projected. I forget. Dagmar, I don't know if you met Daniel. You remember him? Uh, I'm Daniel not quite sure. He's, he, he's a person of hermeneutics. He's the hermeneutic expert. It's a biotic expert and expert on everything that you want. Okay. Yeah. And he can, talk, he can talk philosophy in a way that people understand, which is a unique, a unique gift. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> okay, so now we know who is here. So that's it. I close. I'm closing my mouth. Now everyone that wants to pick it up is invited. And Daniel, if you want to tell us about values... No, I can't listen. Okay. I can't hear you. Okay. Press your mute button. Unmute. No, at, uh, you're not silent, but your microphone doesn't work. I'm going to summon you at the massacre. I'm going to summon you at the massacre. you <laughs> עכשיו, יאללה! מצוין, אוקיי. יופי. אז היה אוזניות. אוקיי, שומעים אותי? 
Yeah, thank you, Matt. Hi. Um, so what I said to Rav Shanta yesterday is that value uh, is a word that is used a lot in ethical discourse, in moral discourse, in philosophical discourse. Um, it has a specific meaning in semiotics, which is that it's the most basic element of meaning of any um, of anything. Any sign has at least two aspects of meaning. One defined by the system within it, with within which it's created, and that's what we call value. Um, and that depends on its position within the system and its relationship to the other elements within that system. Um, so value has a very specific meaning. When I talk about, for example, a moral value, um, I can talk about life having a moral value, and it has a positive moral value. Um, um, uh, property has a positive legal value. Um, these are all signs or terms that have very simple positive or negative values within the system, without, with, within whatever system we're talking about. Um, but what semiotics does is that it takes the word value, which is kind of thrown about without any specific meaning, and it gives it a very technical, but I think very important dimension. Um, and it forces us to say, when we talk about values, for example, family values, right, or moral value, um, first of all, to define what context we are talking about, right? Is a family value a moral value? Uh, a religious value, a sociological value, um, that's the first question we have to ask. And the second question we have to ask is, given that a family value can be uh, any of, uh, 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 situated within any of these discourses or networks of signs, um, can something have different values in different systems, right? We sometimes talk about tension between morality and law, um, that fundamentally reflects the fact that certain signs have a positive value in law and a negative value in moral discourse. Um, the same thing can be true between when we talk about uh, discrepancies between uh, law and economics or morality and economics. Oh, economics family and freedom. Sorry? Oh, family and freedom. Right. Okay, so freedom is a positive moral value. It's not necessarily going to be uh, a, a po freedom ne does not necessarily have a positive value in every other semiotic system. Right. So it's hard to talk about a set of values of society or even a set of values of family because societies and families can have multiple systems that interact within their um, circle, within their framework, um, and certain terms or concepts uh, can have different values within a social context, but have another value within a moral context or a philosophical context or a religious context. Um, so I think, I think when we talk about value, it's important to understand that value is fundamentally context dependent. Um, not just the context of the family, but also the context of um, the various kinds of discourses that are present within the, uh, the, the family's interaction with one another. So I will just, I'll just say that uh, I think what Daniel said in simple words, uh, when we talk about, we, we, I think we can see contradiction. Daniel said that the contradiction is just between freedom and family. Family limits your freedom. If you believe in, if you have a value of freedom, maybe you'll hesitate to, to build a family because family uh, has constraints. But, so, so the positive Free. value or negative value... Free, can, freedom can be... A family can, can ascribe positive value to freedom, meaning a, 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 a family can say, we value your freedom and parents can raise their children in a way that freedom is conveyed as having paramount value. So that doesn't, the, 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 the family unit, no social unit and no family unit can, can necessarily say, uh, can necessarily dictate that these will necessarily be uh, the values of any society or any family. Um, right. when, when you talk about freedom and, and family unit um, and say that freedom is a value, what kind of value is it? 
I think for most religious families, freedom is a, has a certain negative connotation because we want to limit the amount of freedom we give our children. We want to raise our children within a certain religious context or a certain social context. Well, family um, context, yes. There, but, there are families, but there are families for whom that's not true. There are families who put a paramount, who, who see freedom as, as having positive value, and they don't have any particular lifestyle that they want their children specifically to take. They want their children to feel fulfilled as individuals and to have the freedom to yes. pursue whatever lifestyle. Batman, you, you're a mother, right? You have children at, that are 15 years old, 16 years old? Me? Yeah. No, my younger, much more younger. My son is six and my daughter is ten, so... Ten. But you won't... I'm sure you believe in freedom, no? Yes. You choose, <laughs> but you want to know when you... Ten, where is your ten years old daughter at midnight? Yeah, you definitely. Want to know, right? Even with freedom and everything, you want to know where she is. Of course. Freedom, freedom and security are both positive values, but they sometimes contradict one another. Of course, of course. So, so, so I think that this is the idea that we saw in the family values of Abraham. Abraham, it's very interesting. It says, V'shamu derech Hashem la'asot tzedaka u'mishpat. So, Luther has a very, if you can show us the passage again. Uh, okay. Luther has a very interesting translation of this thing, and we discussed it in the previous conference. Okay. Yep. Okay, okay, stop here. You see it that the uh, translation is Takao Mishpat, but Resht and Gut is. So it's complicated, it's not simple. Resht and Gut are, are maybe opposing, could be opposing values. What's right, what's, or what's justice, and what's good are, are two different things. It's, it's uh, maybe you can call it flexible. How would you call it, Daniel? Flexible, contradictory. Why? Containing rest and good. Um, no, they, they, again, those are two values, um, or those are two terms, which have certain values within different systems. Um, within a theological system, as represented by God, both of those have positive value. That's very clearly conveyed by this, by this verse, right? If they didn't but have positive it, value, but God... Definitely, but definitely different in the English, justice and ju judgment. Um, okay, so we could say that, look, whatever, however we translate the terms staka or mishpat, they have positive value. When we translate them, the question is, how broad are we drawing the circle of the, of, of the theological value statement that God is making? Is God making a statement only about um, legal concepts, or is he also making a statement about moral concepts? Right when we when we translate the word mishpat, it's very clearly a legal concept. When we translate the word uh, tzedaka, tzedaka is more ambiguous. Yeah, and definitely. That's that's the point that that any translator has to struggle with here. Or, or uh, every or every father has to decide what's good. Yes, yes. Probably rest. Everyone knows. We we'll all agree what rest is. But what's good is, you know, this uh, every family has to decide. Right. And, so. So let me let me uh, try and, 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 <laughs> yeah. and even it may be um, a discussion between parents and children what is good, not only between families, between the generations. Um, what uh, children, for example, my son is 16, so sometimes he would uh, consider something as good which I would not consider to be good. So you have to struggle not only between different families and, and so on, but also within the generations. You are right. Right. So, so that's that, why, let me, that, let me, why this is the importance of the tradition in the family. Because, let, me, let, me just, let me just follow up Axel's point. Um, the, 
what's the tension here between law and morality? Um, morality, I, I suggested, and we, we, which is, we talked about this at the conference uh, two weeks ago, um, the, or last week, morality has a certain egalitarian side to it. Mm -hmm. When you give somebody the tools or the permission to engage in moral discourse, you're opening you as an authority, God or a parent as an authority figure, is opening him or herself her, him or herself up to being challenged by your child who or your subject who now has the tools to argue with you from a moral perspective right so when god if we translate staka morally well that's what abraham does abraham takes his moral sense and argues with god about stone um, if we give our children certain moral values then then as axel is saying our children may have different senses of right and wrong than we do and if we empower them to think morally, then we are also empowering them to challenge us, uh, to challenge our instructions, to challenge our, our, our lifestyle, to challenge all sorts of things. So you can say this is our tradition to have, we have a tradition that children don't agree with the parents. <laughs> no, it's very important. It's not a paradox. We, we, children don't agree with the parents and still it's a good family. I, can, I want to share with you, I have three, in the family. Uh, I have three children, and uh, maybe I'm older than most of you. Um, all of them are after 30. Uh, now, it's very interesting because I'm religious, my wife is not. Uh, and our three children are, set, I mean, are separated around. So one is a very conservative religious girl, married, and the other side, my son is totally atheist, uh, and almost anti-religious, and in the middle, I have a daughter who is a very postmodern religious fe feminist. So, uh, uh, actually, what happened was that me and my wife were now spread out into three different specific uh, uh, orientations. But if you come put them all together, it's actually me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Nice. I want to, 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 we, to say that's, to you. The authorities have spoken now. <laughs> okay, now, now, how do you see it? How, how do you see, it? can you see any of the points that we raised as, as relevant to people nowadays? As, as maybe trying to understand why we have fewer and fewer families nowadays, or why families weakening, or maybe families getting stronger, Uh, for example, the, the appointed, last, last time we met, Axel, we discussed the appointed side, you know, the, the beshert, what, what we call it, beshert, the, the appointment side. And uh, to understand that family is also responsibility for handing over something. Your family, because you, have, you created something, you want to hand over. I, I would say that the, the concept of tradition itself is being ch challenged, not just the family tradition, any tradition, because we live in an era that uh, only the, the present is dominating our, uh, our, our environment. Our, uh, uh, so tradition is, is dependent on the fact that I have to look backwards. I have to look to my past. And that's not the orientation of at least not what we call today the Y generation, the term, the, the uh, 25 to 35 generation. This is after the X generation, what sociologists call. So I think that's the biggest challenge, the, the fact that we are asking them at all to look back, to see what was before them. Uh, and, and because that's not there, then the parents are not there. Then the tradition that the parents are trying to give are not there. And, and, it, and it fits in in general with what he's saying that, that everything is about the present and that the, the present is valued over the past has to do with the weakening of structures of authority throughout modern society, uh, religion, even the state to some extent. Um, there are aspects of authority that are weakened across society. So it's not surprising that the family, to the extent that we view the family as another kind of authority, or at least 
parenting as another kind of authority, that that would also be weakened. Um, yeah, you, know, you, have, you have an organization that has values, right? That mm -hmm. they're helping the weak, the people that are in the free society, right? That's the way I understood the, about your organization. Right? We yeah, that's... Refugees. What do you mean with weak? Weak I means I... socially weak. Socially, uh, they are strangers, they are... Uh, Sometimes, yes. I mean, we also work, we work with survivors, but we work also with people with disabilities, sometimes with people who are homeless. And yes, we also, not only, but we also work with people who are weak, yes. So that's what I mean, that's what I mean, weak. Weak either, you know, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Weak means that they, you need to work with them because they could not work with themselves somehow. Yeah, but I think if we work with them, we would not consider them, or then if we interact, if we meet, if we have conversations, then we would always try to be eye to eye. And, and that's why I'm so reluctant to use the word weak, because you describe something. About it's paternal, yeah, right. yeah, but right. I think if we talk about... Um, people meeting each other, encounters between people, then if it's a Holocaust survivor or a homeless person, I think it's always important to, to try to be, to, to be on the same level. That's why I'm so, so reluctant to use that word. It's interesting, I think, what you're saying, that the Bible uses usually the term of Geri Atom the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the stranger and the orphan and, and the widow. I think it, maybe it's because what you're saying, it doesn't say we. Mm. It, it, it talks about these people with their specific uh, challenges, but and, and of course we understand that behind it there is weakness. Mm -hmm. But we don't see them as weak; we see them as people challenged by this situation. Yeah. yeah. So, how do you see? Do you see, uh, for example, the children following your, your steps, following your ideas? Do you follow the ideas of your parents in doing that? This is something very important that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It has any family lineage, in your opinion, or it's just you thought about it? You, is it yours, or does it have a family context? In my case, it has a clear family context, because this is how I've been, been raised, and also that I deal a lot with the German Jewish or the Jewish Christian question is a family question because my my mother already dealt with that. The interesting. Yeah, can you t be a little bit farther from the from your screen because we see only your head. Ah, okay, like You're this. Very beautiful, but it's better. To see all <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, sorry, and thank you. So this is a clear family um, family bonding because also my mother did did a lot of work in that direction. For me, it's interesting because I had yesterday um, had a discussion with a good friend, and she is a pastor as well, but she also worked as an educator in a former concentration camp. And we were discussing discussing how we deal with our children with the topic. So it's something which we. Um, talk with them about about the show about what we are doing when do we start because our children the little ones are six year old six years old and and I was thinking what would I feel if my daughter would also go into that direction and deal deal in does is going to choose such a profession and would I be very happy proud because I would say these are family values and this is what we do however you describe this we or would I feel a little bit like, okay, is she, why does she do? Is she feeling that she has to do? Is this positive thing of, of tradition? Or would I even want her to go totally other way and, and study Chinese, you know? And for me, it's really an, an ongoing question. If, if this is something I say, okay, this is what we are. So, and I hopefully you're going into the same direction. Or would I be a little bit frustrated or even panic if my daughter goes into the same direction and, and I would ask myself, does she really choose the way she wants to, to choose? Or is the family tradition so, so strong? Do you understand what I mean? Yes, perfectly. I can you tell chose you to be a pastor on your own? But, excuse me? You chose to be a pastor. It was your I own choose. Decision. I choose, but my parents did not go to higher education and they were always very near to the church. And I wonder if my father had the chance um, if he would then become a pastor on himself, because I think in some kind that would be for him 
the ideal position. When I choose to study theology, my father was a little bit like, oh, really? Are you really going to do that? Isn't there another way for you? And I was feeling a little bit and then later, a friend of him told me that when I decided to study theology, my father called him, called him saying, she's going to study theology. Is she trying to fulfill my dreams, you know? And so for years, I, he was very hesitant that I was doing that. And, but at the end, because I finished then, I was ordained a few months um, after he, he died. And while he I was very sick, he was always talking about, me with me about me being ordained and for him it was a big thing so he never told me but at the end he was very lucky that I did it so there was a lot of yeah the question of family and family tradition and values I, yeah I want to share with you my I was a very very rebellious son so rebellious that my mother keeps quoting that when I was 14 I wanted to go and meet my friends uh, leave the Shabbat dinner mm -hmm. take, meet my friends I said it's not that I want to be with others. It's that I don't want to be with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was that radical. But it's interesting. My, my mother uh, uh, is, a, uh, I mean, she's already old, uh, a social worker. And my father was a teacher. And I, I, oh, I vowed that I will never be not a teacher and not a, a social worker. And I went into film and television. But very quickly, a few years afterwards, what I found is that what I'm doing in film and television is actually educating, trying to educate through film and television, and, mm -hmm. uh, and being a social activist through that television. So in a way, I tried to go as far as I could away, but at the end, I found myself, and I'm very the rebellious. I mean, ended up, ended up. <laughs> so, so I don't know if it's Bashar or whatever, but uh, I think probably more, more uh, 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 um, environment than, than uh, biology but maybe it's also biology. Mm -hmm. And I find that the thing people ask me all the time, because I'm married to a uh, wife, do I want my children to be religious? What, mm -hmm. what would happen if my children would not be religious? And I said, I'm not so worried about that. I'm worried if they would become uh, lawyers or businessmen. As long mm -hmm. as they are in the spiritual, social area, that's enough for me. But if they would go and become you know, this vicious type of capitalist, that I would see as a failure in my education. <laughs> <laughs> so they are not rich. <laughs> no, no. Okay. 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 I'm just my secretary is coming in. I have to run out because somebody is waiting for me already. I'm I'm very sorry to stop it here, but I have to go to my next appointment. Okay. So we'll reschedule. We'll make another another appoint another uh, conference soon. Is it okay with you? This time, Fridays are good for you? Yeah, for me, Friday is good. Axel? Uh, Friday, yes, it's good. Uh, I remember that Alexander wrote that he can be with us in... in two weeks, oh, He right? probably can be with us in two weeks. Yes, but this he says now. In two weeks, it'll be a different story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, <laughs> you mentioned first that you want to, to really force him. So we just should jump into uh, Friday in two weeks, I guess. Okay. And, and fix him, really. And fix him. Okay, okay. Dagmar, thank you so much for being with us. Thank we'll you, that was wonderful, really. It was wonderful to speak to you all. Thank you very much, and Shabbat Shalom, yes? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It was Shabbat wonderful Shalom. to speak to you in about two weeks. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 What about your experience, Axel? Do you fulfill your parents' dreams? Yes and no. So on the one hand... That sounds very Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> on the one hand, my father was a pastor too. Uh. So, um, well, when I decided to become a pastor as well, my parents, uh, I think they were, they were uh, proud. But um, I went a different way that my parents wanted me to go. Um, they, my father was uh, for many years in a, in a uh, parish and then went on in, and, and became, or be, became uh, um, I don't know the English terms, 
so he, he raised the ladder and he became uh, um, an important uh, clergy. So this was... In American, you say big shot. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I always suffered, uh, as a child, I always suffered from the absence of my father because he worked very much. I think 70, 80 hours a week, uh, 70 every, uh, hours a week. So um, I, we, we never um, had very much in common. So we didn't spend very much time together. And um, I always ask myself why I decided to become a pastor after after this experience that my father always really he was committed to his his um, his uh, to his duties to being, yeah to his duties and first he was a pastor and then he was a father or a husband right. So I'm asking after this negative experience, why then I decided to become a pastor? And my answer is that I want to prove that you can be a pastor and a father. So, <laughs> so, so you see, or they, or they tried to do something else and came back to the same point. And you did yes. the same thing to prove the opposite. You 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 followed yes. the step to showing that you can. <laughs> it's quite interesting. So, uh, excuse me, I could not understand. Um, I said that all he said that his family was religious, and yes. he he did things to to deviate from his family, and yeah. then he came back. He, he ended up in the full circle back where his family is. Yeah, yeah. You did the opposite. You started to do what your father does in order to show that you are different. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so, what so, is the end result after a new age? You're not the ripe age, but now you are, you are uh, approaching middle age somehow, slowly mm -hmm. but, but surely. Do you see that you are really different than your father? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, I... And in the first years, when our son was small, I chose um, only 50% uh, pastorate. Uh -huh. you, you know, I, I had not a full, uh, full schedule, but uh, only 50% to, in order to spend the other 50% with my family. Uh, and when our son became older and uh, um, much more independent and he didn't want to see his his father so much. Yeah. So I started to become, or I chose a hundred percent pastorate. But um, I had um, not a regular parish pastorate where people may call in the middle of the night and say, uh, "My father is dying. Please, can you come and visit us?" and so on. Um, I chose a pastorate. In, in a parish where I um, was, in, was the representative for, for oh, and I should start other way, um, we have had, in, in this church, we had many, many tourists and visitors. Right. And I was in charge, or I was responsible for the, um, for the guests and for... Um, for explaining the church to to the guests and the tourists, and I was uh, I was responsible for the guided tours and for our church guides and so on. So I could start in the morning and stop in the evening or or sometimes in the night. But uh, well, this was not a matter of life and death. So I could say now. I finished my my daily work and can can spend my time with, with my your family. Family, yes. And now with your current that, activity with the youth. That was. You have. The, uh, now you are active. I, I now you are not, socially active. Pardon? 
what you are doing now with the people, with the students that you bring to Israel, this is part of your parish work? No, I, I, um, I have no parish anymore. I'm uh, the representative of the Bavarian Lutheran Church for the Jewish-Christian dialogue. So I'm, I have not a, a particular parish that I'm responsible for, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm teaching at university. Um, I go to parishes for lectures and uh, for seminaries and teach them on Jewish Christian relations or tell them of uh, tell them of uh, tell them thing um, issues of Judaism and so on all this is very interesting uh, because we see I, I, I really think that we show that family values are very important either as as Daniel said, either in the negative way or in the positive way. Yeah. Either against or with, but it, it plays a detrimental role in, in uh, people's lives. And, so, and I, just, I just think about the, the decision did you say, to have did you a say family. Detrimental? Huh? Did you just say jet, detrimental? No. What about what? Maybe, I don't know. Not losophony, no, no, the term is, right, so I made I chose the, the wrong word. Anyway, but it's very important in the, in the, a person is shaped somehow by, the, by, by his family values, either, either he goes against them or with them. So, but I think Daniel raised something very, something very important that we should discuss in the future, that one of the reasons, a person decides to build a family is in order to give something over. Yeah. In any way, even, even if it'll go against, you know, but still, you made an impression. Your father made an impression on you, a very important impression. Yes, of course, and, and you... And you, you uh... Uh, You disappeared on us. No, you're, you're on. Yes, what do you say? We didn't hear you in the... Tradition. No, actually, you are lost to us. Could you repeat what you said uh, if a minute ago? No, we are losing you. Again, just repeat what you said. No, we lost Axel. My. Um, here. Can you can you hear me? Now we can. Ah, okay, okay. So I'll, I'm back. <laughs> no, what I say, you always um, um, continue tradition, even in the negative way. This is also continuation. Right. Right. By, but um, I, I I don't see. Only negative. I said yes and no in the beginning. Of course. And and this well, I did not decide to become a secular person or to. Well, we lost you. And, and we lost you. Well. No. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Actually, we cannot hear you. I think Rolly, what Rolly suggested will go on next time. You are raising a very important point, but you froze in the middle. There's a beautiful picture of you holding your hand up. We could make a poster of that. But it doesn't move. No, you are frozen. Uh, <laughs> now you are back. I think yes. we should continue next time. Yes, of course. I but think my Wi-Fi connection you. is is a yes. little bit um, <laughs> weak. <laughs> yes, we have to make the connection stronger. This is the whole point of our thing to make the connection stronger. Yes, yes, really. 
And I, okay. And I so really look you. forward to 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 uh, meeting you all again. And uh, okay, I, Oli, I think we should add to our discussion. One of our people. We have any people, any person in psychology? Do we have people in psychology? Yes. Me. Uh, first one I can think of is Nechami. Nechami, you think she would agree to come? Yes, I don't know about Fridays. What? I don't know about Fridays. I'll have to ask her in advance. Okay, ask, ask Nechami. I think we should add a psychologist to our, to our discussion. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Shabbat shalom. Bye -bye. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. And Udi, I, I think we should. Uh, I think we should use uh, the sugya thing in every meeting. We have to develop it. They saw it now, but 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 it takes like a hot man. Old pam ve old pam kachala. It a mekorot yesh lano. And yesh tadele navet et adiyun chazara el ezeshu mekor. אתה שותק, אתה מושתק, אתה ידעת? באמת? עכשיו אתה לא מושתק, אתה משתק. רולי בטח עשה לי, נכון? רולי, אתה לא. אתה החשוד המיידי. אני לא, לאו, אין לי שליטה. כן, לגבי העניין של סוגיה, אני פשוט, זו פעם ראשונה שאני עושה את זה בסיטואציה כזאת. זה יהיה יותר טוב בפעם הבאה. זה מצוין, תשמע, זה היה... זו הייתה פריצת דרך מההיבט הזה, צריך לשפר קצת את ה... אבל אני דווקא רוצה לצאת משוב על הדינמיקה עצמה, כי לדעתי יש כמה דברים שחשוב... כאדם שהנחה קצת קבוצות, מותר לי להתפרץ לה... אין בעיה, אין בעיה, אנחנו מקשיבים. זה לא טכנולוגי של העניין. יש פה שתי בעיות עיקריות, לדעתי. א', אני חושב שאתה עשית תהליך שהיה צריך להיות הפוך. אתה התחלת מלימוד די הרבה טקסט, ואחר כך עברת לאישי. אני חושב שאם זה היה הפוך, היה הרבה יותר משמעותי. זאת אומרת, אם קודם כל אנשים היו משתפים, ואז היינו מחפשים את השיתופים האלה בתוך הטקסט, אני יכול לתת דוגמאות, איך זה יכול להיכנס לתוך הטקסט, סתם, אני יודע, דיברנו על... רק הדבר האחרון שדיבר, כן, על האם זה ציווי, או האם זה הבחנה בין, בין זה שאברהם שולח אותו, לא מיש... הוא לא נותן ציווי, הוא רק אומר לו, אל תביא לי מישהו משם, וזה הולך בכלל דרך הבשרת הזה, דרך ה... ההתגלות, זאת אומרת, לא דרך ציווי, לעומת האמירה של הקדוש ברוך הוא, שזה למען יצווה את בניו ואת בתוך הרב. זאת אומרת, יש פה איזה מתח מעניין בין שתי התרבות. אוקיי. אני אומר זה, אני חושב שהיה הרבה יותר אפקטיבי, אם היינו הרבה יותר, לפחות מזגזגים, בין הטקסט לבין השיחה. אני זה שהצעתי את הטקסט, זה באשמתי, אני רק אומר, זה לא ביקורת. דבר שני, הלימוד היה ארוך מדי. זאת אומרת, זה מתאים לסיטואציה של... שיעור בפנים אל פנים. אני אומר את זה גם לך, דניאל. זאת אומרת, צריך להיזהר ממצב של הרצאה בשיחה כזאת. זה צריך להיות הרבה יותר שיחתי. הדברים צריכים להיות הרבה יותר קצרים והרבה נכון, יותר... נכון, אני פשוט לא, 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 לא הייתי מספיק... לא ידעתי על מה לדבר עליו, ולכן לא, לא תכננתי את זה מספיק. לא, לא, כל מה שאני אומר זה, זה ביקורת לא כל עצמי, זה לא קשור. לא, אני לא... מבין. כן, אני פשוט פעם לא צריך להכין משהו יותר מתומצת. אני עוסק בתיקון עולם, על העתיד, לא על העבר. הדבר השני שחשוב, אני לא יודע איך לפתור את זה, א', יש לנו יותר מדי ישראלים על מעט מדי יוונים. ויזואלית זה יותר גרוע. ואין לנו נשים, זה יותר גרוע. אבל זה מילא, אבל יש פה איזה סוג של ויזואלית עכשיו אני מדבר, זה נראה כאילו אנחנו עשינו מצור על הגרמנים. זאת אומרת, יש פה איזה חמישה ישראלים, שבאמצע נמצאים הגמלים האומללים האלה, שגם לא כל כך רגילים בשיחה. ואני חושב שיש פה בעיה, בעיה שנייה, שזה קשור בעיקר לרולי וקצת לחזי. אני התכוונתי להיות בשקט. לא, לא, להפך, אני אומר, הבעיה הפוכה. אתם נמצאים, אבל אתם לא נמצאים. לא במובן שאתם לא מדברים. רוחו של רולי שורה על כל העסק הזה. הבעיה היא שרולי, אתה קם והולך. אתה חצי מהזמן מסתכל על משהו אחר, עכשיו רואים את זה, אתם צריכים להיות מודעים לזה. זה ככה הוא עושה כל החיים, זה לא רק עכשיו. לא, בסדר, אני לא יכול להפסיק לעשות את זה. אבל רולי, אנחנו עכשיו בקלוזאפ עליך, זה לא דומה לסיטואציה, אני פשוט מדבר איתך מצד מדיה. זה לא דומה לחדר, בחדר, אם אתה מסתכל הצידה, זה בתוך... אז בסדר גמור, אני אכבה את הוידאו שלי. או רואים את הריבוע שלך? בסדר גמור, אני אכבה את הוידאו שלי. לא, אבל אז הריבוע יישאר. השאלה אם יש דרך ש... אבל זה יישאר ריבוע ריק. 
יהיה ריבוע עם הסמל של ניצוצות. אבל לפחות זה לא יהיה, וחזי אותו דבר, אתה מדי פעם מסתכל, סליחה שאני, פשוט אני הסתכלתי על זה ממבט של... אני הסתכלתי למילון מדי פעם. שוב, באת והלכת כזה, זאת אומרת, זה נורא חשוב שתהיו מודעים לזה. כלומר, אם אתה צריך לקרום, בסדר, אז תקרום, אבל באמת לנתק את הוידאו כשאתה קם. עכשיו, רוני, לנו יש בעיה, אני לא יודע איך להתמודד עם זה, זה כן קשור לעניין של הסוגיה, שתמיד אפשר לראות, לפחות אצלי ראיתי רק ארבע על המסך. ולאו דווקא את הארבע הנכונים, זאת אומרת, במקום לראות באמת את ה... יש לך חיצים בצד. יש לך חיצים, אבל אז כשעברתי הצידה, פתאום שבתאי נעלם לי. זאת אומרת, יש איזה משהו, אני לא יודע איך יוצרים סדר בתוך הסליידר הזה, כדי שבאמת, אנחנו נחליט את מי רואים, ולא... יש פה איזה משהו אוטומטי, אני לא יודע, זה אני אומר לך על הטכנולוגיה. אז הייתה, אני אסביר לך מה הבעיה, אודי. הבעיה היא שאני שולט במשתתפים, ואתה שלט במסך. הפיצול של השליטה הזאת הוא לא טוב, כי זה בדיוק מה שנגרר. צריך... אתה שלטת במירועים על המסך. מי ששולט במסך, הוא גם שולט בפגישה. הרב שבתאי, אתה שולט מירועים במסך הגדול? כן. אני יכול למחוק אותך. במסך הגדול רואים את כולנו. הבעיה שלי זה לא במסך הגדול, הבעיה שלי שאנחנו עוברים לטקסט, ואני רוצה לשמור מצד אחד את הטקסט, מצד שני את הדוברים המרכזיים. יש שתי אופציות. ספיקרס ויו וכוורת. עכשיו, צריך קצת ל- ללמוד את הדבר הזה, אבל יש אפשרות שהטקסט יהיה באמצע וה- והמשתתפים מן הצדדים, ב- בקופסאות קטנות. בואו בוא נעשה את זה פשוט, חבל על הזמן, אחר כך יהיה לזה. בואו ננסה רגע את המשחק הזה, לצורך העניין, כדי לראות שזה באמת עובד. אתה רואה עכשיו, אני, 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 אעשה, אני אעשה לכם שייר סקרין. כרגע רואים כולם, לא, לא להפך, תן לי לא, לעשות. לא, אני אעשה לכם שייר סקרין, שנייה אחת. לא, אבל הדוגמה, המצב של עכשיו הוא לא רלוונטי, כי כל מי שנמצא הוא גם נראה. לא, לא, בסדר, אתה רואה את האפשרות. וזאת אפשרות אחרת, שרק מי שמדבר רואים אותו. לפי דעתי זה הדבר העדי. אני כרגע רואה רק את דניאל, מבין כולם, אני רואה את המסך שלך, אני רואה דניאל. כרגע, מה שאני רואה זה את המסך, ודניאל, לא, אתה רואה את המסך שלי, תסתכל. עכשיו אתה רואה את כל מי שמדבר. לא, אני רואה רק את דניאל. מה? לא, לא, מה שאנחנו רואים, מה שאנחנו רואים זה את המסך שלך, את הדסקטופ. נכון, ובדסקטופ שלי יש ארבעה פרצופים. לא, לא, בלי פרצופים. אני רואה את דניאל, אני רואה את דניאל. אודי, מה שאתה רואה זה בממשק שלך. תעשה, תצמצם את זה, תשים את זה בצד. כן, כן, בסדר, עכשיו אני רואה. כן, זה אני לא ידעתי. אבל הבעיה זה... גם כשאני עושה שייר סקרין, אתם שולטים במה שאתם רואים? לא, לא. אתה, אבל בשייר סקרין שלך, אנחנו עכשיו רואים רק את הדסקטופ שלך עם חצי חלון של דפדפן וחצי חלון של איזה קובץ. אבל כן, אבל אתם לא רואים את... ולא רואים את החלונות של המשתמשים, לא. למה? אני רואה את החלונות של המשתמשים. אני רואה את החלונות של המשתמשים. אני חושב שאתה רואה בגלל שאתה נכנסת, כמו שרולי אמר, אתה נכנסת ל... לזה שלך, ל... לחלונות שלך. נכון, לא, רולי? לא, 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 לא. אני, אני בספיקר ויו. אני, אני, ב... אני המס... כתוב שאני רואה את המסך של הרשב הזה. לא, אתה רואה גם את המסך. אבל הדבר שאתה רואה בתור חלונות משתמשים זה דרך הממשק שלך. אם אתה תצמצם את זה, אז מה שאתה תראה זה רק מה שהרב שבתאי משדר. אבל אין שום סיבה שהשייר סקרין של הרב שבתאי ישדר לנו את החלונות שלו. למה לא? בגלל שאז, תאיר לעצמך שמישהו יש לו גם את ה-view של הספיקרים של דרך המחשב של עצמו, וגם דרך המחשב של מי שמשדר מסך. אז בבת אחת בדיוק יהיו לו שתי גלריז של דוברים, זה מיותר. נכון, אבל עכשיו זה שמשתף את המסך, הוא שולט על המסך. כשאתה משדר את המסך, אתה לא משדר את המשתתפים, אתה משדר את התוכנית של הרצון. למה אמרת לי... צריך ללמוד... אודי, אז אתה צריך לשבת וללמוד איך לעשות את זה. אתה תדע... אני צריך לשחק עם זה קצת, משהו פה לא ברור. הבנתי, אתה צודק, אבל צריך, אבל יש איזה פתרון, צריך ללמוד את זה. לא, אני יותר מוטרד מהקלטה מאשר תוך כדי, כי בהקלטה אחר כך פתאום זה יהיה מאוד מעוות. צריך לראות באמת מה יצא בהקלטה, רוני. אוקיי. בקיצור, אורלי, צריך לבוא אלינו, אנחנו, אתה ואני ננסה לפתור את זה אחר כך. אוקיי, אז אודי, ועכשיו תראה. בסדר גמור, ההערות שהערת הן נכונות. תפסיק את השייר סקרין, שנראה אותך מה אני... מה? אני אפסיק את השייר סקרין. סטופ, שוטר. ההערות נכונות, וה... 
ואתה צודק, זה צריך גם להיראות יפה, וכשזה יהיה מוקלט, זה צריך להיות טוב. במידה, ויש לי בקשה, במידה שיש קטעים בהקלטה שהם טובים, הרי את אריכות הדברים שאתה אמרת, את אומרת, ברוב דברים לא יחדל פשע, אפשר לסדר את זה בעריכה, זה אתם אנשי המדיה עושים כל הזמן. אנחנו נחתוך קצת, כן. אז, אז מה שצריך לעשות, להכניס לסוגיה, מה שאני רוצה לקראת הפעם הבאה, שנוכל להראות איך מה שדיברנו עכשיו נכנס לסוגיה. זה מאוד חשוב להראות להם, אם אנחנו רוצים את שיתוף הפעולה הזאת. כן, כן, ברור. רק, רולי, פה נצטרך לעשות עבודה בינינו, אבל בסדר, נדבר על זה. בסדר, עכשיו... שתי שאלות, בבקשה. אחת ברמה הטכנולוגית, אני ניסיתי תוך כדי להיכנס לאתר סוגיה עצמה ולהגיע לעמוד הרלוונטי, ולא הצלחתי להגיע אליו. זה יכול לפתור לנו את הבעיה שאם אני רוצה לראות רגע את המקור ואתה לא בדיוק מעלה אותו באותו שלב, אני יכול בעצמי לראות אותו. אבל זה טוב בשבילנו, אתה, אתה לא יכול, זה במצב של שייר סקרין. אני, במצב לא. של שייר סקרין אתה לא יכול. לא, אני רגע יוצא ו, ונכנס למחשב ומסתכל, מה הבעיה? כן, אין, הוא יכול. מה הוא יכול? לעשות ספליט? מה שהוא יכול, לא, מה שהוא יכול זה לעשות אסקייפ, לעשות מינימייז ל... אה, אז אתה יוצא מהשייר סקרין. לא, אני עדיין יכול לראות אתכם, את הארבע חלונות בצד, ולראות דברים אחרים. כן, לראות אותנו, שייר סקרין, הכוונה היא שאתה רואה את המסך של מי שמגיש את העניין. אז זהו, אני שואל על חלופה, במקום לראות את המקורות במסך שלך, בשייר סקרין, למה שאנחנו לא ניתן כל אתר של סוגיה עצמה ולעמוד הרלוונטי? אתה יכול להחליט שאתה לא רוצה את השייר. כשאני עושה שייר, אני לא כופה אותך, אני אומר לך. אתה יכול להסכים או לא להסכים. אבל לא זאת השאלה שלי. השאלה שלי, למה לא הצלחתי לאתר את העמוד שאודי העלה בתוך האתר של סוגיה? הוא היה עמוד נסתר? אתה שותק, אודי. אודי, אתה משתיק את עצמך כל הזמן. זה ענב כזה, מה? ההורים שלי לימדו אותי, זה משתיק את עצמי. זה דרך אגב, הלוואי והייתי יכול לעשות את זה בחיים. אני אגיד, אחרי זה אני אסביר לך את הבעיה. הבעיה היא כזאת, כל, ברגע שכולנו נהיה מיומנים ולנוע בין ה... בתוך סוגיה, אז בהחלט נעשה את זה. אני חשבתי עכשיו לא לעשות את זה, כי אתה צריך, אתה מבין, אתה תצטרך להגיע בעצמך לאותו מקום שאני רוצה, שהמנחה רוצה. אני לא... זה לסבך עכשיו את האנשים מבחינה טכנולוגית. בוודאי את הגרמנים, זה סיבוך. אני כרגע רוצה לצמצם את הטכנולוגיה למינימום. אני משתמש בה... באופן שהכי פחות מחייב את המשתמשים. בהדרגה, כשנגיע למצב שבאמת הם מכירים את הפלטפורמה, יכולים לנוע בתוכה וכולי, אז, אז בהחלט נעשה את זה. הפעם אני בכוונה לא, לא נתתי להם לינק, לא שלחתי אותם למקום. אתה מבין, אני לא רוצה עכשיו שהם יחזרו, כי יש שם גם כל מיני... רוב, רוב הסוגיות הן של ניצוצות המקורית, וכאילו להיכנס שם, הם ילכו לאיבוד בתוך, בתוך הדבר הזה. בעתיד נעשה להם בית מדרש משלהם. בקיצור, נדריך אותם באיזה פגישה, איך באמת לנוע בתוך הדברים, אבל לדעתי זה מוקדם מדי. קודם כל, שהשתלטו על הבעיה העמוקה יותר, מה זה שיחה, מה זה דיון, מה זה בית מדרש, בלי קשר לסוגיה. כשהם יפנימו את זה, אז אפשר יהיה להתחיל לעשות את היישום בתוך הפלטפורמה. הדבר השני שרציתי לומר הוא... אודי, רק שנייה, רק שנייה, סליחה, לפני שאני שוכח. אודי, לגבי מה שאמרת, לגבי ההנחיה, יש לי רעיון גאוני. אתה שמת את האצבע על הדבר, שהם באמת לא רגילים לדיון, הם לא, הם לא יודעים מה זה דיון, הם רגילים לפייפר. עכשיו, ראית איך שדגמר נבוכה, כש... והיא היא, היא, היא התחילה להרגיש נוח כשהיא דיברה על המשפחה שלה. <אז> אני חושב שניתן להם להנחות. זה כבר נראה לי too much. אתה חושב? <אז> אני אגיד לך, מה שאפשר לעשות, אם אתם רוצים, זה שיהיה מנחה, ואתה לא תהיה מנחה, אתה תהיה דובר, כי אז, אתה... כי כרגע אתה תפחדת בשתי פונקציות. והתוצאה הייתה שחלק מהזמן נתת שיעור, וחלק מהזמן... אה, הכי טוב היה שיש... שוב, אני, אני בא מעולם הטלוויזיה. המנחה הוא לאו דווקא מישהו שיש לו מה להגיד. אלא להפך, עדיף שהוא לא יגיד מה שיש לו. כן, לא, אני לא מדבר על זה, זה אתה צדקת. אני, אני לא, לא, לא רוצה... אני אומר, אז בצורה כזאת אתה לא תהיה... צריך מנחה, צריך הנחיה. אני לא... לא... לי אין עניין להנחות. הנקודה היא... אתה מציע שהם ינחו, נראה לי שזה לא כן. נכון. כי הם לא... בש... הם עוד לא... שוב, זה דינמיקה שהם... עד כמה שאני מבין, הם לא נתונים. צריך מישהו, אני מוכן לקחת על עצמי. אין בעיה, אבל הבעיה היא... הם מרגישים מדוכאים ככה, כמו שאתה אמרת, הם מותקפים. אבל לכן אני אומר, פה התפקיד של המנחה. אם היה מנחה רציני פה, אז הוא היה משתיק אותך חלק מהזמן, ומביא אותם יותר מהר לתוך הדיון. 
למרות שמי שדיבר רוב הזמן, נכון שבכמות אנחנו יותר מהם הישראלים, אבל מי שדיבר רוב הזמן זה הם, לדעתי. אולי הרב שבתא השתווה אליהם, אבל מבחינת הזמנים הם, הם, הם דיברו שלהם. זה שלהם... בצדק, כי שבתא נתן להם, לא, אבל בסדר, לכן אני אומר, יש סוג של איזון, דווקא כן היה משהו מאוזן. כמות, כן, כמות אבל אבל אתה, אתה עוסק עכשיו בש... בשוויון חברתי, אני מדבר עכשיו על דינמיקה. לא, אני, אני גם אדבר ברמה של הדינמיקה, אני פשוט לא מסכים איתך לא, שזה לא, היה... א', אני, 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 אני רוצה להסכים איתך, ש... שפ... שפ... פה היה הצד הטוב, שפשט נתן להם לדבר יותר. מה שאני מדבר זה, כל, כל דיבור ארוך הוא מאבד קשב בסיטואציה כזאת. לכן, מנחה צריך לדעת, תסתכל על כל דיון טלוויזיוני. תפקיד של מנחים... כן, אבל זה זוועה, זה, זה, זה מחשבות של משפט וחצי. לא, אתה... לא, 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 אל תגזים, אני לא אמרתי עכשיו טלוויזיה. אתה לא מתכוון עכשיו שהמנחה יקטע אותך כל שלוש מילים. ברור שזה הקשר אחר בקונטקסט הזה, אבל עדיין, גם בקונטקסט הזה, שהקשב שלנו הוא אחר, זה לא... המדיום זה מסג', המדיום כאן הוא שונה מאשר המדיום בכיתה, זה נורא חשוב להבין את זה. גם מבחינת זה שהמצלמות הן הולכות בזומים, גם מבחינת... והדינמיקה צריכה להיות הרבה יותר קצבית, לא ברמה הטלוויזיונית, אני לא מדבר עכשיו על, על uh, סטקטו, אבל, אבל כן, כל כמה דקות לעבור, וחסד במובן הזה התכוונתי. שלא יהיה מצב שאדם אחד משתלט, כי אנחנו מאבדים קשב. אני, אני יכול להגיד שאני איבדתי קשב בחלק מהדברים של רבשבתא, בחלק מהדברים של דניאל, וגם בחלק מהדברים שלהם. כי זה כאילו מוד של הרצאה, שאז אני רוצה לראות את האדם בפול סקרין, ואני רוצה לראות רק אותו ואת הזבוקים בכל השאר. אוקיי. אלי, אודי, אתה מוזמן לענות לשאלות בחפץ לב, רק לא הייתי רוצה שזה יהיה... שזה יהיה במצב שהוא שטחי, מכיוון שיש לך דקה לומר את מה שאתה צריך להגיד. אני לא חושב שאתה מכיר אותי בתור אדם יותר מדי שטחי. לא, לא, אבל הנקודה היא לא שלך. לא, לא, אני אומר... אם אתה תגיד לאקסל שהוא ידבר דקה, זה יהיה לנו נורא קשה בלי להקים. ברור, ברור. אז זה מנחה טוב, מנחה טוב צריך לדעת להרגיש את השטח. אוקיי, בסדר גמור, ניתן לך את הצ'אנס. אני אצלוב אותך אחר כך, בסדר. לא, מה שאני אומר לקראת הפעם הבאה, זה שאתה צריך להכין את המבנה, אתה צריך להגיד לי מה אתה רוצה, לאיפה אתה רוצה להגיע, מה הטקסטים וכו'. התפקיד שלי זה לדאוג לך שזה יגיע בצורה כמה שיותר... מאה אחוז. אינטרטיבית. חזי, מה אתה אומר על הדבר? אני רוצה לומר ברמת התוכן, שאנחנו היינו הולכים להתחבר פה דווקא לנושא הקודם של הנדסה הפוכה, כי היה לנו מקרה, לא לנו, לאברהם ולשרה עצמם היה את הדינמיקה של התנגשות בין חופש לערכים, לערכי משפחה, בקטע שבין ישמעאל ליצחק. ובקטע הזה אברהם התיישר לימין לפי מה ששרה אמרה והוא החליט לחתוך. כלומר, היה אפשר לקחת איזשהו מקרה בוחן, לא מחיינו אנחנו, אלא דווקא מהטקסט התנ"כי, ולראות איך הם התמודדו עם זה. אז אתה טוען שהם לא התמודדו. הוא לא התמודד. זה סוג של התמודדות, סוג של בחירה. כן, זה מה שהבעלים עושים בדרך כלל, יש להם את ה... הוא שולט בבית כי אשתו אומרת שהוא שולט בבית. יש להם מספיק שכל להבין שזו הדרך הטובה. אגב, אני, אני הצעתי בקוראן, יש תרגום נהדר של הקוראן שאני הראתי לך, ויש שם סיפור של אברהם ושרה וישמעאל, ויצחק זה פשוט מדהים. המוצג שם של שרה זה אישה זקנה דימנטית. זה ממש מדהים הדבר הזה. הגר היא האישה הצעירה הנורמלית השקולה, ושרה היא הזקנה ההיסטרית. דרך אגב, אם אתה יכול לשלוח לי את המקור, נעלה אותך. אני יש... אתה רוצה לעלות את הקוראן הקדוש לזה או לאתר שלך? זה לא יעשה... יותר קל לי עם הקוראן מאשר עם ארטי לותר. זה לא יעשה כבוד לקוראן. האנטישמיות של לותר יותר רצינית מהקוראן. לא. ממש לא. האנטישמיות של לותר היא לא ניכרת בתרגום שלו. הטיפשות, או הייתי אומר, ההזיה שבפירוש לקוראן היא פשוט מדכאת. זה לא הזיה, זה אג'נדה. זה מישהו עם המון חשיש. למה זה הזיה? זה אג'נדה. תקרא את זה. זה ככה... אני מכיר את הסיפור, אני מכיר את הסיפור ההיסטורי. 
כן, זה לא הסיפור, תקרא את הביטוי. אבל מה שאתה אמרת לי אתמול, שאצלם בכלל אין היסוס של אברהם לגבי השמדת סדור. לא. הכי קצר על הכסח, החרב מיד פועלת. מה? כן, זה בדיוק. זה לא הזיה, זה אג'נדה. אתה לא בסדר, אז מורידים לך את הראש. זה לא הזיה, לצערנו הרב, תסתכל על דאעש ועל קיינה, זה ממש לא הזיה. ודווקא בהקשר הזה, זה בדיוק הנושא שנגענו בו, כי לעשות צדקה, היא דעתי, ולמען אשר יצווה את ביתו אחריו, לעשות צדקה ומשפט, הפרשייה שסמוכה לזה, זה המאבק של אברהם על סדום. בדיוק, זה הרעיון. זה המשפט, דרך אגב. הצדקה זה לפני כן, ויאמן בה השם, ויחשבי הלא צדקה, שזה בעניין של אמונה דווקא, ולא... למה? אני חושב שזה בדיוק העניין. בגלל שהוא דואג לצדק, בעולם, אז אני משתף אותו. ואני רוצה, כמו עם עצמו של רבנו, הנח לי כדי שאני אשמיד. אני רוצה אותו, אני צריך את הברקס הזה על הזעם האלוהי. בגלל שאברהם הוא כזה, אני אגיד. כדי שהוא יסיר... אתה מתפוצץ שם, אני רואה שלא, חייבים לתת לך לדבר אחרת. לא, 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 אני סתם יושב ומקשיב. סתם יושב ומקשיב. אני מסכים עם אודי שהפורמט הזה צריך לשחק איתו ולמקסם את האינטראקציה. אני לא שצריך לתכנן את זה קודם, כאילו, מה יהיה התוכן של השיעור ומי ידבר, מי יתרומה ואיך לשלב את התרומות שלהם גם כן. נכון. אתה כבר הלכת רדיקלי מדי, להשאיר קצת דברים בספונטניים, אבל... לכן, צריך משהו רק סטרוקטורה בסיסית. אוקיי, שכל אחד יעשה מה שהוא יודע לעשות. מאה אחוז, בסדר גמור. בז'רגון הטלוויזיוני אנחנו קוראים לזה ליינה. מי בא אחרי מי ובאיזה... אפשר, אבל מצד שני, מנחה טוב צריך לדעת לצאת מהליינה. כי הרבה פעמים הדברים לוקחים את עצמם למקומות בדיוק. אז רולי, התפקיד שלך, חוץ ממה שאתה מדבר עם אודי, זה לדבר עם נחמי. נחמי תהיה מצוינת בעסק הזה. עקרונית גם סגנית יכולה לקרוא אותה, אבל מישהי שהיא זה בעיה בשבילה. מה? עקרונית גם סגנית היא טובה לזה, רק שימי שישי הם בעיה בשבילה. אבל כרגע ימי שישי הם ארוכים, אז זה פחות בעיה. ואנחנו מדברים בוקר, כניסת שבת היא מאוחרת, אז נראה לי שזה קצת פחות בעיה. בחורף זה יהיה בלתי אפשרי, אבל עכשיו... Spoken like a true man. אוקיי. אני אשמח שאם זה ימי שישי, שזה יישאר עשר וחצי, ולא ייקח למעלה. להפך, זה הרעיון. זה הרעיון. תראה, לכל הגברים, זה שאלנו, למה יש רק ישראלים ורק גברים, כי זה יום שישי בעשר וחצי. אני הולך לבשל עכשיו, אז... מה? אני הולך לבשל עכשיו. אתה הולך לבשל? כן. אודי, אתה עושה איזה תוכנית פעם, אחרי שאתה שומע את דניאל מדבר על סמיוטיקה, צריך להראות אותו מבשל. זה לא בעיה, קח איתך את המחשב ונמשיך לראות אותך, תשים את המחשב בצד. אני אשים את זה במטבח, ותראו אותי גם בבשל. אתה יכול לתת לנו גם שיעור בישול, זאת אומרת, תסביר לנו מה אתה עושה כל פעם. טוב, שבת שלום. שבת שלום לכם, אודי, תודה רבה. תודה רבה. בכל אופן, משהו נעשה פה, להתראות כל טוב. להתראות.